one thing I would like to, um, oh, oh, go ahead. You first. I was just going to kind of zoom out. Where it, the question I'm going to pose here is, is slightly outside of the, the shopping uh, hardware specific question here, but I, I think it's, we'll tie it in. And that is uh, just an observance, right? So we're, we're talking about best hardware for solo staking on Ethereum, but let's look at the range here. We're, we're talking about Raspberry Pis. We're talking about uh, lap, laptop hardware, uh, consumer grade towers to enterprise servers. How is it that Ethereum can handle that range? Isn't isn't it something, you know, isn't uh, this like mining huge warehouses full of GPUs? Like how, how is uh, Ethereum have this flexibility where there's range uh, uh, in, in, into the world of solo staking? And why would that be valuable? You know, I'm thinking of like the NFT world and on one of the digs in terms of like uh, the the sort of narrative within cryptocurrency is that this is bad for the environment. This is, this is uh, consuming way too much power and electricity. So uh, maybe we can kind of touch on the the spectrum here that Ethereum brings to the table in solving for that problem. Sure, and that's actually I've actually heard this, and I, I you know being so deep in the tech, I found it surprising at first, but you're 100 percent right. The person said, "I'm really interested in NFTs, but I know they're bad for the environment." And so NFTs are just tokens. They're good or bad or not for the environment, depending on the underlying blockchain, right? So super, you want to take it? What is proof of stake? And why does it take less energy? Yeah, I got, I got excited when I realized, hey, this is a setup. Um, <laughs> so uh, when Ethereum was released in 2015, it mined with um, with an algorithm that that's specific. Well, it's not specific. It's, it benefits from massively parallel processing. Uh, and so... In the beginning, that was done with, G with CPUs, and um, now it's done with powerful GPUs. Uh, and so the, the current Ethereum chain, what we call the proof of work chain, is powered by millions of GPUs all around the world. It's one of the reasons gamers hate uh, cryptocurrency, because um, cryptocurrency enthusiasts uh, buy up GPUs at outrageous prices and prevent people from using them in their gaming systems. They use a ton of electricity. Um, when I mined Bitcoin 2011, when I mined uh, Ethereum in the beginning, I ran my GPUs as hard and as hot as I could um, and closed my eyes about the power bill. Things are different now. Um, we recognize the impact that cryptocurrency can have on the environment. Um, and we recognize that if Ethereum is going to be a good global citizen, it has to change. Um, and uh, it, it was actually part of Vitalik's original roadmap uh, in 2014, he described it as serenity. It's the switch to proof of stake. Um, and rather than building blocks by uh, entering this kind of contest with other GPUs, um, it's now a, selected, a selection process for people who hold 32 Ether. Uh, and so the benefit of this is that we can run a much larger network uh, and only use uh, one hundredth of the power that we're currently using on the Ethereum proof of work chain. Uh, and it's actually less than one hundredth. That's it's like one, one ten thousandths. Yeah, one that's that's an exaggeration percent, in yeah. itself. Um, it, it, is, it is infinitesimally smaller. And so this is going to allow Ethereum to be a good uh, global citizen as we provide a valuable service. Uh, and I, I, I don't I don't want to slander any other chain, but um, this this kind of is in contrast to other chains who um, are burning energy to make money. Uh, it, it was how we started. Uh, it's not something that I'm proud of. It's not something that I think we should continue. The good news is um, Ethereum is is changing to be a better global citizen, and I think in time people will recognize that and value us for it. Off soapbox. Yeah, so 99.5% at least reduction in energy use, right? Hopefully still this year. Um, so if you're in the market for a gaming GPU, um, wait a few more months. There should be a flood of them in the market. Well, we, we kind of know historically um, when uh, GPU mining opportunities disappear that uh, other GPU mining opportunities appear. And Maybe. We, we hope that... Um, 
that we're kind of setting a standard for, um, again, good global citizenship because the, the same GPUs in a gamer's box aren't, aren't burning the same kind of electricity that they're burning in a miner farm. In a mining farm, they're running at 110%, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and never stop until they die. And then you start them again and let them die again. Um, but if they're in a, a gamer's box, they're only running 18 hours a day. Uh, and so that was a joke. Uh, and so it's, it's much better for those GPUs to be in the hands of gamers than in the hands of miners. All right, then.